Hi, this is Dennis with Second Chance Tackle. Today we're going to work on a, a special reel. In fact, it's a very special reel. Uh, not because of the manufacturer or the design or the elements behind it, but uh, because it was sent in by a viewer of mine, uh, Zach. He's a history teacher, and Zach befriended a World War II vet, a fellow named Glenn. And uh, Glenn uh, is getting on in the years. He still enjoys fishing, and that was the bond that uh, Zach and Glenn uh, kind of united around, unified them. And Zach has had uh, Glenn come in and talk to his classes and the like uh, as a veteran. And uh, Glenn is passing along a few reels to Zach. This is one of them. This is a Shimano MIX. It's a 300. Uh, Zach asked me to tune these reels up by sending me a couple of them. And uh, he'd like to take Glenn fishing again, even though uh, he's getting on in his years. So we're going to take this apart. We'll show you how to service it. If you have one, uh, you'll be able to tune yours up. If you don't have one, if you find one out there in a used marketplace that you'd like to find uh, or have, then uh, this will show you how it's made and the construction of it and how to tune it up when you get it. This is a fast cast variety of the reel which means it only has a single anti-reverse stop. It's always going to find its way back to the handle. And the fast cast allows you to trip the bale as you're casting so that uh, you never have to touch the bale or the line in terms of letting it go. So it's sort of like on the arc, you flip the bale and the, the line runs out. But this is Shimano, well-made well -made reel, my guess is uh, 1980s. And uh, let's get it, let's get started with this thing. We'll show you how to take it apart. So you'll notice a couple of things. I have a protective glove on my hand. I like to keep the contaminants off of that. And uh, I also um, put a parts tray in here to keep all the pieces and parts. So I'm starting by removing the handle. This one has a through handle, so you have to take the cap off the other side. Now most of the time, I'll tell you if you turn your if you turn your handle and the, uh, that little cap isn't turning, then you probably have a screw handle. I've worked on Shimano's. I know that they hide a little screw under here. So don't take that as gospel. Always check if you're having trouble uh, with uh, turning that handle out if you think it's a screw handle. Always check that other side just to make sure that it's not uh, going all the way through and is held on by a little nut. So uh, we're going to take that out. This is what I mean by through handle. It goes through the main gear as opposed to being screwed into the main gear. And uh, I always like to put that handle screw back into that handle so that I don't lose that. So we're going to take that off. We'll take the case off next. And then that'll enable us to remove the uh, axle and then the rotor. And then we can get down to doing the basic cleaning oil and lubricating. With these reels, I always take the screws out and I always put them on my desk, or not always, but I try to as much as I can, put them on my desk and uh, make sure that they're all the same size. I found that some manufacturers, Shimano being one of them, they always tend to have a, a short screw somewhere in the lot. Not all the time, but uh, some of the time. So <clears throat> we'll do just that. Make sure that they're all the same. If they're not all the same, if one is longer or shorter, then uh, you know where to put that uh, when you go to reassemble a reel. In this case, all three of these are the same, so the next stop for those is my parts tray. Then we should be able to pull off this. And this is kind of what Zach was telling me. He was saying that the, uh, the reels have bogged down, uh, that Glenn hasn't used the reels in a while. Uh, and, uh, you know, tuning them up is, is kind of easy, but uh, you want to make sure it got done right. So we have a lot of dried grease on here. You'll see the channels are pretty much devoid of grease. I'm just going to pull some of that off just so I can get a better shot at it. The reel is a relatively simple reel. It has a brass bushing uh, as uh, one of the pivot points as opposed to a ball bearing. It also has a little peg here that holds the cross wind arm on, so we're going to pull that peg out. That will enable you to remove that. And what I like to say at this point usually is take pictures along the way. Uh, taking pictures along the way enables you to record uh, at various stages where you took pieces from so that if you go to reinstall the reel and you get stuck, you can simply go back and reference your pictures. In this case, um, I'm videoing it, but you can use a cell phone camera, you can use a fixed digital camera, or you can record your own. 
Uh, regardless, it's a good practice to do that. So here is your uh, axle shaft and drag assembly. This has a little unique drag assembly. We'll show it to you later. And uh, once you pull that axle out, then you can remove the main gear. You'll see that there's a bushing on the other side. And there's just a little bit of dried grease. I'm going to leave the bushing in. There's just a little bit of dried grease here. So the reason why this one is sluggish is that it uh, pretty much ran out of grease and what grease it had dried up. So it's just a matter of cleaning this up. I'm going to use some cotton swabs, some paper towels. There's nothing really even to scrape off of here. But then we'll go up top here and we'll pull that, uh, that gear out of there and uh, we'll clean the back of the main gear here. I guess we can do that right now. And just while you're doing this, check the teeth on the gear. Make sure that all of the teeth are uniform, that there's no uh, bent ones or cracked or chipped. Look at it this way as well. Sometimes you'll find high and low spots in those. This has a little bit of grease sitting inside the channel, so I'm just going to take a, a hard fiber brush and just get that old grease out of the teeth while we're at it as well. And then I can put that in my parts tray. We'll come up top here to remove the rotor. Then you need a 12 millimeter wrench. So I have a wrench. Also, if you happen to have the Miller, uh, Miller the Mitchell. Uh, tool for the Mitchell 300s. That's also a 12 millimeter. You can simply uh, just kind of put it on and turn it that way, or you can use your 12 millimeter uh, wrench either way uh, to get that off. Okay, so that's going to remove the nut that holds the rotor. We can remove the rotor. You want to check to make sure it's clean in here. There's a little bit again of the dried grease that's been there for some time now. We'll go get that out where we're at it. I want to check the operation of the bail while I'm at it, just make sure everything is working the way it is. We know because I was showing you before that it works. I'm going to pull that up because there's a little bit of grease behind that. Let's get that out of there. I'm going to put a new drop of oil in there. I tend to oil the, the bales. The grease, if, you know, the, the pieces on the bales are exposed to water, particularly if you're in a salt water environment or they're, they're um, exposed to ground if you're on uh, fresh water and uh, get some of the dirt kicked up there. Uh, if it's grease, it traps that dirt. If it's uh, oil, less so. All right, that goes in my parts tray. Here's uh, the assembly then. We've got a little bit of an eccentric uh, screw kind of a thing going here. Uh, we have a, a top plot on this and we have a little spring mechanism here that's going to hold over that clip. That's, uh, this is an old-fashioned kind of a, uh, an assembly, but uh, again, this is probably from the 80s anyway. And I'm just going to try and get that little spring clip off the pivot point there so that I can remove that. Okay, so then we're going to just complete the process of pulling this up. There you go. Keep these in sequence then. You know that the top swing arm is going to be to the point. Next up you have that single clutch or uh, control point that's going to be the, the anti-reverse. Then we have a little collar that goes over the bearing. So keep those uh, in the right order. They stack like this. You can take pictures along the way. That gives us access to the bearing now. So let's go take the bearing off. Again, this is sluggish, so we want to make sure that the bearing is spinning and that the, um, everything is clear and free of dirt and debris. If it was an annual tune-up and you weren't having any of those problems, you could simply uh, go ahead and put your grease in there and move on. All right, the channel is nice and clean. Just for demonstration purposes, we'll take a Q-tip and we'll just run it along the inside of the channel there. Make sure you get all of that grease. It's a good time to get any grease that might be behind the case, but as we mentioned on this one, if there's anything, it's all dried grease. Um, let's move ahead with that. We're going to clean the channel of the pinion gear, just like we were cleaning the channel of the teeth. We're going to use a soft brush just to pull any debris that might be in the channels out of there. And as you notice, I didn't put this stuff into my parts tray. That's because we're going to put it right back in the assembly. I'm going to use some fishing reel grease then for the pinion gear. Give it a good uh, lubrication since it hasn't been that in a while. 
I'm going to spin my bearing, make sure all of that is fine. I'm going to put some fishing reel oil on my bearings. So I'm going to use Reel X, and then we can reinstall. There's a little copper collar here or something that uh, belongs in the bottom. And we can place the assembly back in. You have to meet the the bottom of this pinion gear has to go into the hole there, so if it's not seating right, uh, just take your time and do it again, uh, just being careful. Let's see if we can get these small screws in. It's always a bugaboo of mine. These small screws hold the bearing in so that your rotor doesn't fly off. There's two of those there. And then we have the anti-reverse uh, override. The uh, uh, I'm sorry, the, the yeah, the anti-reverse override. That's a toggle switch here. You want to make sure that the toggle is working fine. You can put a drop of oil in there. That'll keep that loose. Also, make sure that the dog and now this is going to run on that eccentric spring, but you want to make sure that it's it's functioning properly. And a drop of oil there will keep that running well. Okay, so let's go back and put that stack back on. So that's the reverse order then. So there's a collar that sits first. Then we have the two of these. And there's indentations here. You'll notice that there's indents and studs. So that's how it sits on here. I want to make sure that gets on there properly. You remember that this was on the upside and it's going to go across that stud there. So we can And do a good job, a better job of holding this on, but if it falls off, you can always put it back on in the... There we go. And then right before you go to make that final little sit, you just want to line up that spring so that you can get that over the stud as you place it down. So there we go. That's, that's how we found it. You can see it moving now. That's how the eccentric will work. And when you override it, it'll push that out and allow that to go full spool. Okay, we've serviced that rotor. We've put a little bit of oil on both sides. We've cleaned up the bottom so the rotor can go back on. And then our 12 millimeter nut can go back on. This one's a clockwise turn on the nut. And again, you, uh, you can use your 12 millimeter wrench, or you, like I said, you can use a 12 millimeter socket, or if you happen to have one of these Mitchell 12 millimeter tools, that works too. Give it a spin, make sure that it's turning nicely. It really is. Uh, these are solid reels, so uh, Glenn may have not had a chance to maintain these uh, in the last few years. Uh, no worries there. These are going to last a long time. I'm going to take my lubrication uh, brush now, grab some of the real grease, and put that over the the bushing, even though it's not a bearing, it uh, still needs some slip factor, so we're going to go ahead and do that. We put some on the teeth for the main gear. Of course, we put some on the pinion gear already, so that's uh, between the two, they're going to work their way in and keep that nice and, and lubed. And insert that. Do the same thing here. We're going to put some on the face because that, uh, that face is going to slide around with that uh, cross wide arm. We're going to install this before we work on the spool then. You can make sure that that shaft is clean. If you uh, have any doubts, get a little bit of 4.0 steel wool, which is the ultra fine. It's the finest that they, they do in terms of coarseness. I'll go ahead and do that. Put a little bit of lube. Don't put a lot on the, the shaft here because if you put a lot, all it's going to do is seep out of the top here. I'm going to send that down then. And now we're going to grab the crosswind arm. We're going to insert that over the, the ring, line that up with the shaft, and there's a hole in the shaft, so you want to make sure that you you can work your pin into that hole in the shaft. That's kind of what I'm doing here, so I know it's hard to see for the camera. And then uh, you want to work that on out on the other side. So there's a there's a indentation in the back here. We'll try and move this up and show you. 
there we go. So, so there's a channel back here, and that's the back end of the pin. And what I was doing is I was having a little bit of difficulty. It's, it's hard to see, but there's a hole in the back end of the crosswind block that goes into that channel. And you can put a little bit of grease in the channel, too, if you like. That's not as important as the other part. Okay, with that done, then we're going to put the, the plate back on. We can put a little bit of grease again on the back bushing here. Put that on. Make sure it fits nice and easy and that there's no binding. If you're feeling binding, something is not installed properly, don't force it. Especially don't force the new cases if you're working on a, a reel that has a plastic case or even a graphite case. If something's binding in there, take your time. Go back and reinstall. You may not have the, the bearing on the, the other side of the reel seated properly. There could be a lot of different things that cause the bind. But don't just uh, muscle it. You may crack it. And if nothing else, uh, you'll impede the performance of the reel because there'll be something dragging on there that doesn't belong uh, as you set it up. Okay, so we're just putting the other two screws in here. Now some folks have asked, and you've heard it several times on my video, some people have asked about mechanical screwdrivers. Uh, I don't recommend them. For the same reason, I don't recommend muscling a binding part. They have a lot of torque in them. They can over tighten the reel and they can cause problems. So we're going to just solve this last one here. There's one more screw to tighten. And we'll give it a quick test and then I'll show you this drag up top. It's a pretty simple drag. It doesn't have a lot of uh, max drag to it. But then again, this reel was pretty much designed as a as a freshwater reel. Okay, when I got this, I noticed it was a right hand crank. Of course, that doesn't matter if you're doing your own reel, you know where you prefer it, but if a customer sends one in, it's always a good idea to notice what side it was installed on. And these are reversible, so if you wanted to make it a left hand crank, you simply insert from the other side. But I'm sure Zach and Glenn will have a good time with this reel. And uh, this is what I call fishing with memories. Uh, you remember a lot. But the equipment is, hasn't changed that much, but you certainly remember where you got it, when you got it, who you were fishing with, and so on. And uh, I think that's probably what the, the real purpose behind this uh, tune-up is all about. So I've tightened down the screw. We're going to put that cap on. And again, just be careful as you're doing these. You don't want to cross strip it, so make sure it's going in square. Take your time. Oh, I'm having a little starting issue here, but that's okay. There we go. Okay, so that essentially is the reel. But let's go up top to show you the, the drag component up top. Then. So the drag component up top is is a it's called a. A disc drag, uh, disc drag. It's a single drag. It's one piece, and uh, it doesn't have a lot of max drag to it. But you can see it's a whole different setup than what you would normally see. Normally, on a reel like this, you would see a, a drag stack in the middle here going to the axle. This has got simply a hole, a collar. It's just got a very small disc. I'm going to see if I can get that out. That's it. That's your drag disc. And it presses onto the back here. And that's what holds and gives you the grip, the friction between the, the, the spool, the, the disc, and the click ratchet. Very simple. Okay, then we'll tighten down the, the drive. Just listening for that click ratchet. There we go. Nice and tight. Give it a whirl, nice and easy and smooth. Bring it back for our casting position. Use my thumb, but uh, just make sure that the bail trips and everything. And that's it. That's your Shimano MIX 300. If you have one, that's how you tune it up. If you're thinking about buying one, that's the mechanicals that are inside of it. And I look into how to tune that up if you do get one. And this reel will last a long time. It's a really, very, relatively simple. Uh, manufactured process from an engineering standpoint, not overly complicated. 
but certainly something that uh, has stood the test of time. So with that, I hope you've enjoyed the video. If you did, please like it, subscribe. Subscriptions are what keeps me going. And uh, I wish you a good day. This is Dennis with Chance Tackle. Thank you for watching.